All right, let's move on to the tentative budget fiscal year 2015. There are a lot of questions were submitted uh, on the tentative budget. A couple of things that we, we need to just uh, remind the board and the facilities, uh, our finance advisor can also uh, address questions as we go forward. But we need to have this on display for 30 days before we can formally approve a budget. There is not 30 days currently between our August meeting and our September meeting. Um, the last two years, this is the timeline we've followed. We, we approve a tentative budget in July with May 30th actuals. Um, towards the end of July, the board is uh, an, an addition, the final copy of the budget with June 30th actuals is presented to the board. That stays uh, available to the board for comments and questions through the August meeting, as well as through the September meeting when we formally approve the budget. So somebody, I think there was a question submitted of why are we approving this uh, today with May 30th actuals. So this is the same format that we followed uh, the last two years. Well, since I'll ask the question, I, I, I don't understand why we can't. We're, we're basically approving for a tentative budget the numbers you have for 2014-15. Can't we do that and then have the document updated before it's posted with the actual numbers? I mean, there's so many balances in large item numbers that we're saying in our, our uh, you know, for what do we call the beginning part of this? Our assumptions, like I'll just use one. We're saying that the legal expenses were going down twenty thousand. That's if you compare last year's budget to this year's budget. But if you compare what we actually spent this year to what you're budgeting, we're going down f over fifty thousand dollars. So and there's whole category, there's whole totals on funds that. We're saying, we're, some of them were saying we're going one direction and we're going in a different direction. So I, I just, since we're really trying to approve what our proposed numbers going forward is, can't we do that and, and have the document updated with the actual numbers and have that posted to the public so when people look at it, it actually reflects what we're proposing? Tim, how did we, how did we address this last year? Because I know there was a point at sometime in late July once the, uh, the June 30th financials were received from the treasurer's office and then they were manually entered in, we re-updated that posting so that it included the June 30th. I don't know exactly what date it was given to the board. It was certainly by the August board meeting. But we, we it was just, prior to, I think it was even prior, prior to, that, to the August yeah. board I mean, meeting. We've started updating th this budget with the June 30th numbers, but this budget was sent out, had to be sent out on the 2nd of July. We don't have June 30th at that point. So May 30th were the 31st were the the, uh, the best numbers that we could use in terms of what the actual was. So in principle, the board can approve the tentative budget that we're proposing tonight, and then the the document that would be posted online through September would have could have the June 30th actuals. Is that correct? Right. We we can wait until we get all the June 30th numbers in. We usually change those last two columns to compare the budget to the June 30th actuals here, we're comparing the tentative budget for 15 to the budget for 14, um, which is what we did last year. Once we make those changes, then yes, we can we can put the admin newspaper, put it on the website, have it available for the public for the 30 days. So I, I think the clarification, we can approve it tonight. There can be a, a, a seven to 10 day layover while you update it with the June 30th and post it in the paper. And we'll still have to be posted. We'll still be in compliance with the 30 days before the September hearing. Yes. Okay. Well, don't we have till August to approve it? Because we not 30 there's days not 30 days from August, August to September. September meetings. It, is it due the first meeting in? There is only one meeting August? in August. I mean, in September. I thought we approved it, the latter meeting at the cow meeting in September. No, usually no we approve it at the business meeting. Plus, there's things they have to do after it's approved to get it prepared to actually submit right. it to the state. Right, Tim? Yes. There's some, some forms and things you have there's to do. There's a different right? format that we have to submit it to on the state, where a lot of this is summarized. So, 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 refresh my memory here. We, we have a tentative budget published, but we can still make change to it. Absolutely. Because you alluded that you may want to go last year we and present to us something for the correct. drama 
Correct. To bring out a, a second play. And then what happens in August is we update you on anything that's changed from what we approved tonight. Then what happens in September is we update you from anything that's approved since August. And then Fair we enough. finally Fair adopt enough. the final one. All right, I just want to make sure it's clear that we can still modify the budget. Absolutely. And you guys are going to come to us some, for, for the drama. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So what do we want to do here? Well, I think, I mean, Mr. Walsh had some general questions. I'll try to skip the, the ones in the first are just for, you know, we, we make a statement that there's an effect of something, but we don't say what the dollars is. And it seems to me it's not as useful as an assumption when we're saying, you know, this is happening, but we don't know what the effect of it is. So where do you want us to start? Uh, give me give me just a, a brief clarification so Tim can address that. So can you provide at yeah, least one I'll example? Yeah, give a simple one that I think everybody. If, and it, I, I'm going to try adding 27 pages because, as you know, I don't bring up the new one. I think it's on page 239. Yeah, it is. Is that it? It is. So if you if you say non-certified salaries have been increased by 1.7 percent per contract, what's the dollar effect on that? Because most of them were saying, you know, what's the dollar? Certified staff has been increased by 4.5 FTEs. For this purpose, is people understand it, and us, what's the dollar impact of that? I can well, I mean, I can give you the dollar impact of, of what the change is in salaries from last year to this year. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of factors that go into that. There's there's the, well, the one. But well, my point is, it, it's it's in a in some things we say what the dollars is are, but we have right. the other. It's. If you're trying to understand how it affects the budget, it's not particularly useful. And again, I'm thinking you're publishing it for people to read it. So just to say, so again, we don't have to go through every one of them. Maybe some make sense, some don't. But I think it'd be a lot helpful to know that you know the 1.7 percent non-certified. It's you know, whatever it is, thirty thousand dollars. I don't remember what the number is. Even if it says approximately. Yeah, or approximately. Yeah. Tim, can you do that? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said, certified salaries is, is not just the increase that, that was. Well, right, because <coughs> there was maybe some people left or resigned. People we're hiring a new teacher the, compared new to a teacher. Right. Kind of okay. So there's a lot of factors. But I think a gross increase would be fine. Yeah, dollar increase. I'm sure the next question you'll receive would, would be like, well, how can we increase by 4.5 but only go up this dollar amount? I'm sure you'll see that at some time later. And then okay. we'll be able to explain. So what else? On the capital projects, and Kevin, we talked about What that. page? Same page, I think. Okay. Same page. Yeah, it's that where yeah. it's on. Uh, yeah, it's very last 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 yeah, very so last item on that page, I, same page. I don't, still don't understand where we put $6.5 million in for this year. I don't see any way we're going to spend that kind of money this year. Well, there's no two things. One is that that was the general um, timeline that, that that Kerry provided and that shared with the Facilities right. Advisory Council. There's contingencies, overhead, all that's built in there. Plus, a lot of that might not get paid until after July 1st. Right. So we, Tim put that in there as that's like as an A to Z completion of the project. But some of that, you know, it could easily be spread over two fiscal years, maybe three fiscal years. Right. We don't know how long that project's going to take. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, Kerry was saying it could approximately cost about 6.5. Okay. So that's why he came up with the timeline and broke it down the way he did. In the event we don't spend it during this fiscal year, it would just carry over in the reserve and we would rebudget. So you could I don't put know. A, Tim, you can also put an assumption in there. In fiscal year 2014-15, we spent this amount from the 6.5 and carrying over the rest. You know what I mean? Are you okay with that? Tim, are you okay? And the we're going to have to. People, are you okay with that? Yeah, because we're just get, I, I'm confident we're going to have a, at least a three or four million dollar variance on that item. At, right. But at the, the capital end of the fund year. It does, isn't going to be commingled with the operating fund. So if we look at our operating funds and do we operate at a surplus or not, that's different than do, do we operate at a surplus or not in our capital funds. Okay. We're going to do this project, we're going to spend this money. I think, you know, whether we budget all of it or part of it, budget all of it, if we don't get it done, it's a capital. It's a capital so fund separate and distinct from so the operating funds. So we make it clear funds. that we're putting in the 6.5 budget, 6.5 million, with the assumption that it's a multi-year expense. I would say it's at least two. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I, mean, I would that. imagine. Well, a but I think it's probably the, better to grasp it all at once so that we can see from a standpoint of how it's allocated out of roof 
stadium, whatever. Right. Yeah. And that's what we Which tried to do in the yeah. yeah, and, and that's what we did the line. Footnote it then for the public. That yeah, this right. With the, if you look at Tim, what page well, uh, McGinnis is that on? It's far. It's, it's on uh, uh, page uh, two thirty nine, right at the bottom. No, yeah, it's uh, really the actual good. numbers are Excellent. farther down. Is it like the last page of the expenditures? Fund sixty. Yes. Yes. So that's roughly two seventy eight. It's on two seventy eight of the current board book. If you look at like 278, we then took the fund and we broke it down so you could see like 2.9 was allocated for stadium and track, 640 was tennis courts, 750 parking lot, 100 roof, demolition 200, bike path 35, renovation and upgrades, professional services 1.7. So we already started to break it down and then we'll be able to do it, uh, have like an accounting sheet for each of those line items to uh, account to the public for transparency as we move forward with these projects. And this, if we only spend half of it, this will not, again, this will not bring a $3 million surplus to the operating fund budget. Right. All right, so can we go for a vote, to, uh, motion tonight to at least make, uh, put this tentative budget up? Tim will update it per what he said for the June actuals uh, within 10 days, you figure? Let's just say that the- uh, Hold on a second, if, if I know it's late, I'm going to skip as many of these as I can, but there's some other ones that I don't understand why we're doing it the way we are. All right, so let's I'm go. going to skip all the ones I can. So, two, uh, third, forty-two. Okay. We're putting the whole hundred thousand dollars of uh, whatever this is. Page two forty-two. Yes, I think it's two forty-two on uh, tuition for summer school. We're putting the whole hundred thousand dollars in one line item. But how are we going to then be able to assure that there's a break even on each of the separate camps, as we are told that is monitored every year to make sure that that's what's happening? Even if we if we maintain the, the system we've had in the past, we separate it into all these different accounts. We, we can't look at the financials because it crosses over from year to year. We can't really look at the financials and say, okay, did, did, we, did we run a a summer girls running and, and did we break even on that you're going to have revenue that comes in in one year you're going to have expenditures in another year so what we do is the athletic office and the business office both keep spreadsheets that, that tally all of the the, the the revenue that comes in all of the tuition payments that come in and we also track all of the expenses for supplies and things like that that are paid out we charge 10 percent for the trainers 10 percent for the facility and the balance that's left is paid to the coaches. We don't pay those coaches until all of those all of the supply uh, invoices have been processed. So, so most of these camps that have already taken place, we haven't paid these coaches and won't pay them until sometime probably in August. And and, and I know that Tim and, and Art come through and they always do that spreadsheet presentation. I think the additional step you have to do is just make sure you can reconcile you know, between you know how we always we always have that dilemma problem between the two years. But since you're going to bear put it into one line item, some way we can reconcile those spreadsheets to that one. Right. Line so item. we will have a spreadsheet that details every one of those camps that we've run during this. We have previously done it where each camp was in its own line. Item. Correct. Yes. So this yeah. is the first year you're recommending to do it. Right. To eliminate some of the line items. Okay. What's your next question? So. Um, uh, it doesn't. I don't yeah, know if it's. It, it, I don't know. I mean, our, if it's creating that big of an issue no, for the board, then I. No, we I just want to remember the transparency it. come. Transparency comes with our spreadsheet coming through, and and doing the spreadsheet because we even even in the budget when we see it here we can't. It's, it's very hard to reconcile inside. to know whether we may prop. So it, it's the additional additional spreadsheets that are put together that we can monitor these programs. Because the kids pay for the camps May June, and we don't pay out the expenditures. Right, because we wind up having a whole year where we see the expense. I think totally, and then we, we we the revenue came before. I forget which way it always flushed out. And when when he comes to the business office and says, "Okay, pay these coaches these amounts of money," we check our numbers and say, "Wait a minute, you know, if we don't agree, no, I think off no. I think our yeah. offline is fine." And we've been able to show the board that's that we've run cost neutral yep. for three years. It's yep. just a matter they want to know for the budget that's going to be posted to the public. Is this better? Can we accrue for that those amounts so that we can reconcile them in the same year, this same school year? 
where cash space is not cool basis. No? It's a no, small ticket it's item not for worth the it. Yeah, it's no. not worth it. That's why we do it separate line. I mean, it, the, the, and it's, it's better control actually than to force them to actually physically have to sit there or have to just sit there and, and look to see supplied. Now I, because part of it is to say, okay, how much revenue do we get in? How much supply cost? Now I have this left to allocate out to my personnel. That's kind of how we forced them to make sure he's not. That's exactly how our summer camps yeah. right. Once all POs and purchases are paid, that's what's left to divide. The left to divide the most, and that's why it gives them the incentive to get as many people into those camps as possible because then they get an opportunity to make more money. But we 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 got to, to that discipline, and I'm putting it on budgets. Not within this budget, it's not going to do it. It's the spreadsheet that's forcing them to monitor it. Okay. What other question so do you have, Tim? We all we, we I assume you're just <coughs> offsetting. You increase the revenues for the summer by thirty percent. Did you? Is there an offset on the expenses? Or? Well, on the, on the revenue side, the, the, the May 31st number was $54,000. I'm sure you don't have everything in for this year. Though, well, right? we're at the end of June, we're up to 100, over $100,000. Oh, okay. So the, the huge amount of money comes in. But that $100,000 that we have at the end of June, part of that was paid last year in July for some of the camps that were run. But the bulk of it was paid now in, in as Kevin said, in May and June for the, for the current camps that are running. So that's where it's crossing over in two years. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can go through this quick. Next page, Tim. The, the, the commissions on the um, food, you just match it to whatever your, the numbers are changing because of your new deals, right? Right. Last the year we just put the all the commissions into one account. In this current year and next year, we're going to separate that into the commissions for RV and the commissions for the feeder districts. Okay. That's why there's two separate accounts and there's, okay. there's nothing shown for 14. I'm trying to go faster, Matt. Tim McGinnis, if you know the one the big ones that you wanted to explain too, that might help. No, I'm going to skip the ones that like we, we've already raised, so. The, oh, here's one. The the what other. Page? I'm sorry. I believe it's on page uh, 246. On the other local revenue, how come we're going to zero on that? We, as of May, we had 34,000. That's the account where we put the, the money that we get from the insurance company that reimburses us for for any kind of damages we have. Oh, okay. That's so all that's in any, there. There's nothing. Okay, and the other state revenue, we're going the other from state revenue. the next line. Right. The, we the, expect that to go up after the discussions we're having here. Well, the $42,000 includes the 11000 that we have on that school safety grant. Okay. And the 31000 that we've gotten from the state on um, for, the, for the movement of the sign and the, the work they're doing at the corner of First Avenue. And okay. And then, Kevin, it could have tied it the other one, but I'm still a little confused. We're doing life safety at zero. Right. We've talked about this a couple of times. We, if we allocate money to the life safety funds, then we have to follow the parameters. So what? tell me again what we can do. So we do put that? everything through capital improvements uh, in that capital fund. And then as we're charting the repairs, we're keeping a spreadsheet to what repairs address items on the life safety report. But it gives us more flexibility to keep all the money under capital. And then on the, on the insurance, you just compare it to whatever our rates are going to be for this year, right? Which insurance? Just medical and dental yes. and all that. You, you know what our rates are going to be already, right? Yes. On page 254, I think it's going to be white. I mean, again, this could be right out of the new uh, uh, collective bargaining agreement, but on the organization sponsors, which are about six lines down, we combined in 58 to 105,000. So we had a lot of different stipends that were, is, am I right? Am yeah, I going we had the right stipends road? for clubs and things like that that were being charged of the English department and the science department. And right. Didn't make any sense. So we cleaned it up by putting all the spice stipends in the, you know, because there might have been an improv stipend. So it's not, it's just combined. We Again, put all the stipends in the one so line. It's not up the parent. Okay. Right. right. And on page 257, you, we have certified sellers 111,000. For next year, and we put no, uh, you know, none of the loaders like the TRS. 
That, that TRS number is federal TRS that we pay on certified salaries. Next year with the Title I grant, we're not going to put any certified salaries into the grant. Oh, okay. So we won't have to pay those federal TRS dollars. Okay. And then, just to help me out, because you've got the six million in the one, so on page 259 in the second group, there's a capital outlay, I don't know, for vocational ed of $27,000. That's the, the, the grant amount's going to be about $27,000, but the grant hasn't been approved yet. What do we so get? We, it's we a know. capital project, though? It's not really. It, it can be in all of those different accounts there under Carl Perkins. Okay. The money can be spread into all of them, but we don't know where it's going to be until oh, so the, you just until pick, until you the grant gets there. approved, so we just pick an account. Okay. I'm skipping any of that. don't seem very important for today, so. On uh, page 264, in the second two groups, we made a, uh, the e in the driver's ed, for instance, why would we increase the uh, certified salaries by 50%? Um, we increased the, um, the FTE there, I think, from 0.2 to 0.3. Okay. Why would there be an expectation that we would have fifty percent more need for drivers. I, I don't know that anybody mentioned that to us. Students sign up. Okay. And we could we have enough room for that then? Yep. And on ESL, we cut that by fifty percent. I think that's some of that of our grant. Okay. Was that correct, Tim, under certified salaries? Or did we move that? Um, we may have moved it. I know that the we the, the FTEs for ESL was decreased by I think by point five. Maybe this is the same as you had on the, let me make sure I can find it though. On, the, on page 266, it might be the same answer as before. We have staff development there, and we have the TRS going to zero where we had 11,000 this year. That's because the, the individual who is, is running that is the interim uh, assistant principal for curriculum, and we're, we don't pay any TRS. Oh, because we know exactly who's going to do it then. We talked about legal services. Legal services, you had asked about Scariano. We paid them fifty-eight thousand dollars. No, no. Year. Well, we paid them fifty-eight, so we're yes. we're, okay, so we're not quite reducing it all the way down. Okay. Okay. No, I think our total was one hundred sixty-seven. We're going down to one hundred ten. So okay. for the most part, we are. Yes. Okay. What's the ten thousand in temporary salaries for the principal? We didn't have anything like that last year. It was in the superintendent's account last year. We put it in the principal's account because that's uh, the ten thousand dollars we allocated for the elimination of the registrar's position. So when they have big projects or things that are uh, related to the guidance office or registrar's position that they can bring in temporary uh, assistance to get through those projects at the time. Right, so we had it last year, we just moved it under the principal's budget instead of superintendent's budget because she controlled that. Last year we had it at 14000 so we cut it back. I think Mike explained all the changes we're having in the tech, so it would make sense we're having changes in the tech budget. Then. And then the I think this might on the uh, electric and sewer. What uh, page? on page two hundred and seventy three, I believe. If I can add correctly. Yes, you did. We're going up again on uh, gas and electric. We're paying your salary. Unfortunately, we don't serve here. But I mean, the ga for instance, gas was highest it's been a decade, and it's not expected yeah. to be again next year. I increased both those by five percent. I, 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 as I did last year, I would suggest we look at what the at least the suppliers are suggesting. I'd be very surprised if they're seen. Do we not do a cooperative for both of those? Yeah, Tim. That's we do. Yes. So, is there a, a contact person you can contact at the cooperative that? Yes. Did they give you five percent, or did you just put that in there? If not, can you contact them to see if they're what they're projecting for school districts to budget? Yeah, I can contact. What type of increase? Yes. All right. Anything else, Tim? And on the on the transportation, which you answer what a lot page? of questions, two hundred and uh, seventy-four. We we're showing a fuel cost of one hundred ninety thousand. Is that just the way you're putting it on the budget? Yeah, 
guess again where I, I the way we've done it in the past is is when a, a sponsor picked up one of the minibuses if the bus was needed gas then that the cost of that was charged to their activity um, if it had gas then it wasn't so it, I mean trying to look at these different all these different accounts uh, and say how much did, did English or foreign language spend on the I mean, it was meaningless okay. so we talked about just putting it all in one account okay and we've increased that to some extent for the additional transportation we're going to have to have to move some of our uh, events off site with the construction okay the answer to, on 278 in case people want to look that's where they broke down the capital projects which already answered the question about it and I think on the on page 278 also at the end at the total at the bottom it says we're having a 13.2 million and 59.47 increase but that that's, that's not right is it that's including the six and a half million so it, it, um, but even with the fact six it's, and a half million it's wrong I mean do we count well, it twice it, or something we count it twice because it's a it's, it's an expense. It's an expenditure out of the working, working cash cash and, and an expenditure yes. out of the, okay it's also on the revenue side okay can I have a motion on resolved this? that the Board of Education Township High School District 208 Cook County Illinois hereby approves and adopts the budget containing estimates of the amount available in each of fund as a tentative budget for the said school district for the fiscal year 2014 and 2015 and be it further resolved that this tentative budget following adoption by this Board of Education shall be made conveniently available to the public for inspection for at least 30 days prior to final adoption thereof at the September 9th 2014 board meeting we have a second. Second. Second by Mike Welch. Any more discussions? If we if we take the net income from the operating expenses and we back out the working cash transfer, we're basically looking at a sixty nine thousand dollar surplus. Yes. I think I think you guys have done an excellent job to get us to this point. The only I, I agree. I agree. We, guys and ladies. Do we do we have to change the uh Resolution to update it for the actuals, or is everybody okay? With I that? think it says estimates. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Also, I'm very impressed the way how Tim addressed all the issues and knew right away about that budget. Thank right. you, Tim. Appreciate it. All right, Mary so Ann. Wait, no. wait, Tim, wait, wait, Dr. Keene. Hold on, Dr. Keene's got a question. Try to pull something. So, uh, <laughs> the assumption on the tax refund is half of the budgeted 750, so we're assuming it's 350. Or half of what we actually did. We budgeted so, 800 no. in the past, correct? Right. We budgeted for all of the funds. It was, we budgeted 850 thousand dollars. This year it's going to be 425 thousand. We're budgeting based yeah. on our council. Right. Right. The actual but, number was probably less than 50 thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, Maria. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. 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 Mr. Jefferson. Yes. Mr. Cindy. Yes. 